Thanks, hallelujah. Give God glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. We give him glory tonight, saints. We magnify the Lord, for it is him that has brought us. And God has kept us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. God is so good to us. Amen. It is an honor and it's a blessing just to, just to even know the Lord. Amen. I'd like to say to you all that are watching through live stream, Facebook, and YouTube, and amen. We pray for you and your families, and pray that God will just keep you, all the bereaved families, and, and, and um, all the sick and shabby, and Johnson family, and amen. And, um, so many of the bereaved, all the bereaved families, and God just keep you. He is merciful, and gracious, amen. Thank God for our for his healing power, even with my daughter, amen. And just thanking God for how he blessed my brother and just praying for my cousin, amen. 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 And Kevin Stenson and Willie Carlisle, Jr. Thank God for, amen, my daughter, amen, Evangelist Johnson, that he's a healer. Amen. 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 You just got to give God praise, saints. Amen. And give him glory. God, for how you wash over each one of you all and your families. Thank God for how you wash over my mom, my aunts, uncle, and this family. You just got to pray for each other, saints. Amen. I'm telling you, you got to pray for each other. You got to pray. This is praying time. This ain't no playing time now. This is a praying time now. It means all to always pray. The Bible said the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail as much. Yeah. I thank yeah. God for prayer, saints. Yeah. Prayer brings strongholds down. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Prayer loose. My God, he'll set you free. Hallelujah. My yeah. God. Yeah. Prayer over the windows of heaven. Yeah. That God will pour out a blessing. Thank God for the blood, church. Yeah. I thank God for prayer being able to talk to God. Amen. Amen. We are, we are, I want to look, just hit back in that, we've been teaching a lesson, amen, and I pray that you've been blessed about our responsibility to grow. Our responsibility is our, is our obligation and duty, amen, for us to, to want to go forward in God. It should be our duty. I know that God he comes not for but to steal. I mean the adversary comes for not for but to steal, kill and to destroy but the Lord's outcome that you might have life. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. The Lord will save us. Yeah. And so now for God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. So when when Saints, when you think about growing, it is not a, it is not, it, 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 it is a good thing to, we, when we get saved, we get the, the basis, we get baptized, we repent, we, and we get filled with the Holy Ghost. But, but, but the reality of it is, is for you to grow is because at some point you're going to be tested. Yeah. I'm telling you, you're going to be tested. You're not going to be tested on how many scriptures you know. Amen. Amen. It ain't no, it, when, when we go through tests and trials, God is trying to find out how many scriptures you know. Amen. I'm telling you. Amen. That is why it's so critical for you, for you to, 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 to not only get saved, but to want to grow. Yeah. Because when the tests and trials come, 
That's going to be that's going to be the issue. That's going to be the issue, saying. Are you are you in a position that you could pass some tests? Pass some tests. Because when the devil comes, he ain't trying to he ain't trying to he ain't trying to check see how many scriptures you know. I don't care how many scriptures you can quote. I don't care. I don't care how many you can you can read and you can all that, but can you pass some tests? Because that's what that's that's the ultimate ultimate. I thank God for knowing scriptures. I thank God for a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Because one of the the, the key thing to you growing in the Lord is when it, when you get confronted with tests. That's going to be the issue. Throughout the Bible, you'll see that God, even in our blessings, even when God do things for us, even, even after we get saved, you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. Son. I'm telling you now. You are going to be tested. And that is the area right there where the same our brothers and sisters oftentimes struggle. You can quote, the Lord is my shepherd, you know all these. I shall not want all these scriptures. But what do you do when you get tested? What do you get to when you get tested? Because now that's that's really the challenge. You know. Because now those scriptures that you quote, that you see, so you know that you've been reading and studying. Now here goes the reality. Let's go back to 2 Peter. Because we think, oh God, I know a lot of scripture. Yes, you got to know, you got to read, you got to study, you got to pray. But but the, the, the scripture, the word, it's gotta be, it's gotta be become a part of you. It's got to become you. But we put on Christ by baptism, but then we gotta put on some stuff. We gotta, and so now listen that listen that uh, what he's what uh, and here we are back in Second Peter as as Paul here as Peter I mean Peter admonishing uh, guiding for those that are growing. I want to start back at uh, the fifth verse. Because we got, we dealt with the first four verses. You know, we understand the knowledge of, of and, 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 and life through him, godliness, and life through Jesus Christ. But now, in the fifth verse of 2 Peter 1, listen at what he says here. He says, and besides this, the first chapter in the fifth verse, of 2 Peter. He said, given all diligence, careful, a careful effort. Besides this. Okay, besides, and now when we read in the third verse, he said, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him. That has called us to glory and virtue. So we 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 are in a relationship with, with, with Jesus. Now here, here the qualities carry to qualities to develop in life, things that we need to, that our duty is our responsibility. Now it goes from what, what Jesus, Jesus has done. And I thank God for what he has done. Now the ball, and so, and, 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 and really, in, in essence, what he's saying, the ball is in our court now. Now it's on, on us. And besides this, besides what Jesus has done, besides that Jesus came down through generation genealogy and died on the cross for us, gave us the opportunity to be saved through by his, we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world. Now, out of all that Jesus, Jesus have done, 
When you read from the first to the fourth verse, it's talking about Jesus. What Jesus, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, obtain precious, like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. So we understand and appreciate that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So now we understand what Jesus did. Now it's up to us, besides this, besides what Jesus did, now what are you going to do? Because now it's our responsibility. It, it, is, it is our, my responsibility, it was my responsibility to repent, it was my responsibility to be baptized in water, in Jesus' name, it was my responsibility to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And he said, besides this, all that Jesus did for us and what he made available to us, it was left up, up to us to be, to be obedient and to obey him and to follow his instruction. And so now besides this, giving all diligence, carefully, and since you have God saved, and since you've been saved, what have you added to your life? Add, 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 add. How, how, how careful were you to add stuff? Because the devil wants to subtract stuff from you. He really wants to take you out if he could. You out. And so now he said, add to your faith, to your assurance, to your belief, to your trust, add some virtue, add some mor morality, moral, good morals. And then to virtue, to knowledge, learn some stuff. And to when you add to knowledge, some temperance. And to some some control, have some control. And to temperance, some patience. Some control, be able to wait on some stuff. Sometimes you just got to wait on things. Wait. You got to wait on some things. You got to wait. You said patient, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Charity. Now look at the eighth verse. He said, if these things be in you and are found, if they could be in you, not only get in you and be in you, but they need to stay in you. They make you, ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will always be productive. But he that lacks these things is blind. And cannot see a fall. And has forgotten that he was purged. Cleansed from his old sins. Wherefore the rather brother give it diligently. To make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things ye shall never fall. God will keep you. Now unto him that is able is in Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the only wise God. So you, God will keep you if these things be in you. But I, but the thing that you got to understand, saints, is that as you grow in the Lord. It is all about how you react and respond in tests. In tests. People that are blessed in God, people that are delivered, saved, and God have brought you through some stuff. God have made so many ways for you, opened so many doors. But you're going to be tested. It's all about a test. The test.
Did you pass the test? Amen? I'm telling you now. Can you pass the test? You can stand up and quote scriptures all day long. But when you are confronted with a test, can you pass the test? Can you pass the test? And let's look at some scriptures. Go to uh, Matthew. you to see something. Look at the uh, I want you to see something here in the fourth chapter of Matthew. The first verse read, Then was Jesus led up of the will of the Spirit. This is God in his humanity and the second part of the God he has the Son. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, to be test, a test, to be tempted of the devil. God's allowing, allowing him. My God, it's amazing that when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was at the water and hunger. He was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Here is Jesus now. This is Jesus. Now, then the devil takes him up into the holy city and settles him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning him. And in thy hands shall that their hand they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. This is Jesus, y'all. No sin, no God. And he's in the midst of a test. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he prayed, let this cup pass. When he was, you know, Eli, 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 about the not Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? The test, the test. This is the word, the walking word, being tested. You are going to be tested, saints. You are going to be tested. This is why it's so critical. For you to, it's not about, it is not about the, 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 how, how many scriptures you can quote, or how many uh, books of the Bible, and all that. You've got to know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of God's mouth. Out of God's mouth. The, you've got to get to the point that. If, 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 if you're going to grow in the Lord, it's got to be born of your in instinct. You got to instinctively live this life. Amen. It's just, you can't, when I'm going through something, I, I'm not trying to guess and find out how to, how to renew. It, it part of, it's just part of you. It's part of your it's, it's natural. This thing being saved gotta just naturally become a part of you. Amen. 
You got to be part of your instinct that naturally you should. It, it, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not looking through the Bible for a certain scripture to fit my situation. But when you find yourself growing in God, He said, "Add to this and add to that and add to virtue and knowledge and temperance and and and, and God brotherly kindness and then also charity." But I want you to see how that 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 everything everything that God does for us it is all about a test. He gonna test you to see do what I do for you. Do it mean more to you than your relationship with me? At the end of the day, you'll see that do do what I do for you. The tangible, the physical stuff. Do that mean more to you than me? And so here we go, God. Jesus, he's being tested. Tell me he's being tested. It's not a matter of whether, he, whether he's going to fall or fail. But this is really showing us that you, you're going to be tempted. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tried. It's not about the knowledge and when we add to the knowledge and we learn stuff about the Lord. But can you pass the tests? Can you pass the tests? The things, the lessons we learn, the, the trials we go through, things that we are confronted with, you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. Oh, yes. Going to be tested. And so now, when we grow, our responsibility to grow, it is not for you to grow so, so, so you can get a whole lot of head knowledge. It is so that you can become, become the type of person that can, that can pass tests. Pass tests. Because if you do these things, you shall not fall. God will, for, it says that if these things be in me, you shall, you will be productive, you will be producing, you will not be barren, you will be fruitful, you will be bugifying, and you will not fall. God can't keep you if you want to be kept now. If you want to be kept. So he said, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Jude says that too. And to present you fall. So now God can keep you if you want to be careful. If you want to be careful. Everybody don't want to be A lot of people just, some folks just don't want to be careful. You can't make no excuses now. You can't make no excuses. So if, if you're going to be successful in being saved, saints, it's got to become a part of you. I'm not talking about singing and because we shout, we have a good time and all that. But this thing, this is, this is, I'm not, I'm not wondering what I'm going to do next. I'm not wondering if somebody, if somebody, if somebody come at, come at me in a hostile manner. I'm not having to go tell them, hold on, let me get my vows so I can see how to respond to you. You see what I'm saying? Because you all, it's, it, it's, it's part of your instinct. You, it have naturally. This is how I have chose to live my life. So I, I sense it is part of me and being led by the Spirit, you already know how to respond. If, if you're confronted with something, you already know how to respond. You already know how. Because it has become a part of you. The Word has been, it has been engrafted within you. It's become a part of you. The engrafted word. I heard Bishop Jack and I looking at some, that was a power when he said that the engrafted word, the word that stuck. The word that stuck, the word that became a part of you. All a lot of scriptures and stuff, you can read stuff, and some things don't stick. Amen. 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 All scriptures don't just stick. But the engrafted word, the word that sticks, is stepped 
And you, you ain't got to you ain't got to fast and pray to bring it back. It became a part of you. And so when I need it, it's already there. It's already there. It got to be part of your instinct that hey, hey, if, if somebody do you wrong, you automatically know what to do the right. It just it just fought. So that is that is growing out of responsibility to add, add to virtue, knowledge, and temperance, and, and patience, and, and, and brotherly kindness, and charity. You gotta add. Then we understand the fruits of the spirit also. But here I wanted you to see a the testing what God, why, why we need to grow. Because now, these, these last two years, it has been a, 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 we're seeing fulfillment of biblical prophecy, but it has been a time of testing. It's been a time of testing. It ain't been, it haven't been a time to see how much, how much, how much knowledge you know, but how you respond and react in a, in a, in a pandemic. Do you, some have, some have fallen by the wayside. We've got some that are backslidden. We got some that are thrown in the towel. We got some on the verge of quitting. Then we got some that have, that have stood the test. Say, hey, I'm, I'm not about to give up. I'm not about to quit. If God kept us before, he can keep us again. But you got all different types because this is why the, the, the learning and the our learning lessons are preparing you for getting you ready for the test. The test, uh, this has been a test. Every time, every time my daughter gets sick, that's a test for me. Every time. And then last time she had to go in the hospital. That was a strong test. Do you, how do you respond? Do you keep your composure? Or you, do you quit? Do you throw in the towel? Do you start questioning God? Do you still praise him? Do you still serve him? Are you still obedient? Or do you get, throw a pity party? It's all about a test. It's all about a test. Go to Genesis 22. It's all about a test. It's all about Testing. Testing. Growing. Blessed people. Growing saints will be tested. They're going to be tested now. Genesis 22. Genesis 22. You want God's blessing? Get ready for the testing. want God's blessing, you better get ready for the testing. Because you are going to be tested. Hallelujah. And when God tests you, he's not testing you to trip you up or anything or to cause you to fall. But the testing is really to see your commitment to him. How committed you are to God. Yes, I can praise him when everything's going all right. Yeah, we can serve him when, when, uh, when all this is and this is happening and that is and things are going on like that. But what about when God takes what he has blessed you and tests you with it? Let's go to Genesis 22. Walk out with that. Genesis 22. See, this is why you got to grow something. It ain't about head knowledge. That ain't what it's all about. I can quote it's a lot of scriptures. But then some of the scriptures I know, I, I, I can't even think of them sometimes. Amen. When I'm going through a storm. Amen. Amen. I when when it, my, my daughter dealing with what she dealt with, when the saints are going through, and when things are happening, I don't be trying to think about all the scriptures I know. 
That'd be pretty good. Because you got to go on instinct. You got to go on already because it's already a part of you. It's, it, hey, it's, it's, it's natural. You got to natural praise him. Give him glory. In all things, give thanks. See, it's, it's part of your instincts to do it. So now look, it came to pass, the 22nd chapter of Genesis, and the first verse, it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. He tested him. He tested him. Abraham, get ready to be tested. And he and said unto him, Abraham, father of many nations. And he said, Behold, here I am. My God, my God. Thank God you need to know where you are when God called. And you need to be in the right place when God called. I'm telling you, saints. Thank you, Jesus. And he said, Take now thy son. The son I told you I was going to give you 25 years before I gave it to you. But what you did, you listened to your wife and you slept with Hagar and had Ishmael. And I told you I was going to give you a son. Because one of the signs of growth is patient. Second Peter told us that. Add to your faith, your the Greek in the Greek, this is your assurance, your trust, your belief in God. Add to that virtue, some moral, some good moral. And then knowledge and temperance and temperance patience. Add to that. And so now here, Abraham has another son. Ishmael by Hagar because he was not patient to wait on God's blessings. He was not patient when God told him he was going to do it. And, 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 and this is why it's, it's so this is why I was sharing with you on Sunday about faith by itself and the faith. Contending for the faith. Contending for, for the foundation doctrine, our belief system, then it will help you to have faith, assurance, belief, and trust in God. But it starts with the, the apostle doctrine with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. And so now, when it talks about in 2 Peter, add to your faith. Add to your faith. Not the faith, because the deep faith, the foundation is already in place. But add to your faith that you believe and trust that God will do what he said have already done. Says. Hallelujah. I'm telling you now. I've got to believe the church. I've got to believe the word. And so now here God tests us. If you're going to grow and be one that God can use, God is not to see how 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 many how many hurdles you can get over, how many storms you can come through, but God wanna test you so He can use you. Amen. Can I use Him? Can I use her? What do she do, or what do He do when He's in the middle of a test? I'm not concerned about how many scriptures you're going to quote and you said, God, you're in a test and you're standing up there quote. That is not God is going to see. Is this part of your instinct that you are committed to me? Listen at how he talks to, listen at how he's talked to Abraham. He said, take now thy son. The one I gave. Because the one you got was of the flesh. But I gave you the one of the spirit. Hagar was of the flesh. Thy only son, Isaac. God. Mad. 
It is amazing to be called Daylag, Sarah Lag. Amen. Amen. In the Hebrew, now Isaac, in Hebrew means God lag. Isaiah, God who saves. Now Isaac, God lag. Now whom thou lovest. Take your only, I'm getting ready to test you now. The, on your only son, whom thou lovest, good God. I gave him to you. You asked me. And thou loved him. And now the Lord is asking him. Get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee. Test him. God is testing him. He's testing. We are all being tested. We all go through tests and trials. Testing. He's test. God did tempt Abraham. He's testing him. That tempt means to be testing. Because now God is getting ready to deepen his capacity to not only trust him but to obey him. And he does the same thing for us. Take thy only son Isaac whom thou lovest and now go to Moriah and offer him therefore a burnt offering. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, Saturday it as, and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and cleaned the wood for the burnt offering. And rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Listen to what he says. After God have, is testing him. But it is amazing in the midst of the test, he's intertwining it with faith. Because he said, uh, we going to come again to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Good God Almighty. Amen. And even the symbolism and typology that Jesus, Jesus I come that you might have life. Amen. Not only that I come, but I'm coming back again. Amen. I'm coming back again. So and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood, some of the cross. The wood, the cross, and took the cross of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac and his son, and took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together, and Isaac spake unto his, unto Abraham his father, and said, my father, and he said, here am I my son, and he said, behold the fire in the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? The cross, the son, the wood, the cross, but he, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself. Good God Almighty. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together and they came to the place which God had told them. Uh, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound eyes of his son. And laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord, Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know, I know that. I know that thou fear. I know that in the midst of a test, I still need more to you. Good God. Thank you, Jesus. For now, but now I know that thou fearest God. How, how much do God mean to you, saints? How 
much to be made to you when you are being tested. But now I know that thou fearest God. I mean more to you than stuff. I mean more to you than things. You, I, 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 I love my wife, I love my family, I love the saints, and I love everybody, but God still is number one. He still got to be number one. Because it is him that, that helps us and keeps us. He said, for now I know that thou fearest God. Because you were willing to give up what I gave. Just to show me that I mean more to you than stuff, than things. You're going to be tested, saints. We are all going to be tested. Tested. To love God and to grow is not about how many scriptures you know. Has, has the word become a part of you that you instinctively do it? It's part of your instinct. It's natural. It's a natural flow for you to do this. I don't have to fast and pray. You know, you, we fast and pray for certain things, yes, and keep the body in subjection. We do certain things. And get, but then, living this life for the Lord it just, it's just natural. It's a natural thing. It's not a when you when you commit and commit thy way unto the Lord and commit yourself to the Lord and commit your life to the Lord, it become natural. It become natural. It's no longer now, but that still don't stop the test. It still don't stop the test. You're gonna be tested, church. You're gonna be tested. I'm telling you now, you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. Come now. God is trying to see, can I use him? Can I use her? You keep failing the test. You haven't learned that. He said, for now I know that thou fears God. See, and thou hast not withheld thy son. Thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram, calling to think a substitute. A substitute. Jesus Christ was a substitute for us. Amen. If Jesus had lived, we would have died. Amen. We would have. Through his death, we are able to live. Here goes the rank as a substitute. A substitute. My God, thank God for a substitute. Thank you, Jesus. He's a perpetuation for our sins. Not only for our sins, only thank but you. for the sins of the whole world. Jesus Christ, he, he, is, he laid him on the wood. Symbolize the cross. Amen. And here now the substitute. Pointing us way over to Calvary. Yeah. A substitute caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. A substitute died. In his place. A substitute died in our place. Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Church. Hallelujah. My God I thank you. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you. My God we serve. He took him a substitute. And offered him for a burn up. And Abraham called the name of that place. Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. From that day forward, as it is said to this day, and in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. From that day, he called it Jehovah Jireh. 
the Lord will provide. Jehovah Nisi, God my banner. Jehovah Shalom, God will send peace. Jehovah Shammah, God will be present. Jehovah Rofika, God is a healer. Hallelujah. Jehovah Elohim, the eternal creator. And so right here now he called this place Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. And that was a sacrifice. So God is testing. Testing. How have you done when you're a test? Go to Job. Let's look at Brother Job. Let's look at Brother Joe. Another type of price. Joe. Joe is going to be tested, saints. Anytime you are blessed and God is involved and instrumental in your life, get ready to be tested. Get ready. You're not going to be exempt. You're not going to be immune. But God is still able to keep you. Listen at what we want to. Let's read here in in in, um, in, in Job. Listen what Job said in the first chapter. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect. See, he was perfect, pleasing God and upright, and one that feared God. And it's true as evil. He reverence and respect it. You heard me talk on Sunday. There is a lack of reverence throughout society toward God. And you can see by some of the stuff that's going on, there's a lack of reverence. There's a lack of respect for God. People now are just doing crazy stuff, all type of crazy stuff. You have preachers and oh my God. I was uh, a pastor, one of the pastors sent me a, uh, y'all heard that, y'all y'all remember when I let y'all listen to it? The pastor let the other pastor use his church, and they went over, and then when the pastor came out, evidently they must have needed to be back in the church or something, and here they are, he get mad with the pastor when the pastor stopped the service. And cussed the pastor, like, we are in a crazy, that's a lack of reverence, church. You get mad with somebody for letting you let they let you use their church and you wouldn't then show enough respect to be on time. To start the service on time and to finish on time. It's a lack of reverence. This is where we are. And then you go forth to cuss the man out in his own church after he done let you use his church service. A lack of reverence. Brother Job here now. He feels he is true as evil. He shines. He gets he gets away from stuff. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Good God, the seven complete. The three, the four, the three, seven. His substance also of seven, seven thousand and three. Here we go. Five. Those numbers, the numerical system of God. You got seven, three, five. Great, my God. Five. The substance also, seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yokes of oxen, five hundred, five hundred she asses, and a very great household, so that his man, this man was greatest of all men in the east. And his son went and feasted in their house, every one of them. Every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about, Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered, burnt, offered according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Thus did Job continually. This is why you got to pray for your family. Amen. Pray for your children. Amen. As if they don't sin. And if they have not repented themselves. You pray for them. It may be that my son have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Thus 
Then Job continued. He prayed for him. He prayed. We got to pray for the children. Pray for your children every day. Pray for your children. Now, here we go now. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered, The Lord has said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and is true as he? Then Satan answered and said, Does Job feel thee for naught for nothing? Has thou not now? Long as you got, has thou Job ain't just served and fear you for nothing? Has thou not had not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the works of his hand. His substance is creased in the land, but put forth thy hand now. Touch all that he has, and I will, and he will curse thee to thy face. The test. The test. The test now be ready to take place. The test. But the thing about it, God is in the conversation with the devil about you because he knows. He said, Yes, how wild are you doing? Not do this, but you. You know, uh, uh, he says, the 12th verse, and the Lord said unto Satan, Oh, all that he has is in thy power, only upon himself, but not for thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. My God, isn't it something? Even in God allow us. To go through stuff. He's still able to keep us church. When God allows you to be tested. God is still able to allow you to. Go through the test. He allows. Him to go through this test. He loses everything. His sons. His daughters. Everything. But if you skip down to the, the 22nd verse, in all this, Job sinned not nor charged God foolish. Test. Test. If you're going to be blessed, get ready to be tested. Get ready to be tested, the saints. I'm telling you. And so now, when we go back, I, I just want you to see that about Job because in the end, Job received God gave back to him because he he held his integrity. He didn't sin foolish. He didn't curse God because when Zophar built that Eliphaz, his three friends, his wife, he still didn't curse God. He still held his integrity. He still trusted God. And so now when we look back in 2 Peter, he said, add to, you got to add to your, add to the, this faith virtually. And, and because it is not about the amount of scriptures you know, things. And that's good to study, study to show thyself approved. But what, what God is going to be looking at is can you get through the test? Have you prepared yourself to get go through the tests? Because we all gonna be tested. We all gonna go through tests. Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you, we all gonna go through some tests. Can you pass the test? Can you pass the test? Can you pass the test? Go, I'm going to give you just one script, one more. I want you to see this. Go to, uh, go to uh, uh, first uh, Corinthians. I want you to see some. When it talks about charity in that, that, uh, that last part down there, he said, add after uh, He's after brotherly kindness. 
charity. Now look what look what and you all know enough of of First Peter. I mean First Corinthians. Look what he says about charity in the thirteenth chapter. Now, I'm just going to read, I'm not going to read all this. You can read this, this whole, whole chapter is about the characteristics of love. But I just, I want you to see something here. Now, the first verse, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass and of a tinkling cymbal. I'm just making a lot of noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountain and have not charity I am nothing so my point is it's about can you pass the test you got all this prophecy you got all this knowledge you got all that Understand all the mysteries, and you don't mean to have love. You can't even get along with nobody. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You got all this prophecy, you got all this knowledge, you got all this mystery, and you can't even don't even have no love. And it's all about the test. Amen. It's all about the test. Can you pass the test? Is the sign that one is going to see. How do you respond? How do you react when you are being tested? Because we are all going to be tested. And so when you add different things, the virtual, and the, 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 it talks about knowledge, and it talks about long suffering, it talks about temperance, it talks about brotherly kindness, it talks now and then in charity. And so I also read Galatians 5 and 22, it, it deals with the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit. Fruit. Then you got the, the works of the flesh. Let me hit that right quick and then we'll, we'll wind it up. Just go to Galatians 5 right quick. These are the things because you're going to be tested Since you're thinking you're not going to be tested. Amen. People that God blesses and people that God do things for, you're going to be tested. Look here in the 16th verse of the 5th chapter when he talked to Galatians. He said, this I say, walk in the spirit. This is not talking about moving your feet in front of one another. But this is talking about a, a way of life. Walk in the spirit. It has become your way of life. Yeah. It ain't talking about how you walking with your feet and stuff. The walking with your feet is the is the, is the final result of your of your way of life. And he's and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that that ye cannot do the things you would, but if you be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. These, these are the works of the flesh. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness. Y'all know what that is. And, and uh, the adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, lustful, and idolatry, worship and idol, witchcraft, put a spell on my God, or somebody, hatred, variance, trying to bypass stuff. Immolation, trying to imitate, rap, deep, intense, feeling, strife, fighting, sedition, heresy, envy, jealous of somebody. Don't be jealous of, rejoice with them. God bless your brother and sister, rejoice. Murder, killing, drunkenness. This is not just drunk with alcohol, intoxicated with uh, alcohol, but intoxicated with, with some crazy feelings. Reveling and partying and such like. That right there. I love that part right there of that verse. 
I love that part in such life. Because that such life will take care of all the excuses. Any excuses that such life. I ain't doing that idolatry. I ain't doing that witchcraft. I ain't doing emulation. I ain't doing ovarian. I ain't Indian. But that, what about some such life? That such like will get you now, I'm telling you. Be careful because that such like will start pulling some stuff out of you that you didn't think was in you. Of which I tell you before, as I have told you also, that in time past they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit, see it's not an S on there, fruit. All this should be in the fruit of the Spirit. It's love, God be joy, some peace, some long suffering. Can you go through some stuff? Can you have some patience? Gentleness. Meekness and gentleness and humble goodness. Faith. Meekness. Temperance. Against such, there is no limit. There is no limit. There is no law. There is no limit. Test. How do you respond when you are tested in your walk with God, saints? How do you respond within your marriages and in your in just your, your individual life? How do you respond even with co-workers? How do you respond when you're in a hostile situation? Soft answer turns away, strap with grievous, strife with grievous, words stirs of anger. How do you respond? It's all about a test. Growing is not, in the Lord, is not based on head knowledge. It's not based on how much scriptures you know, but how you respond in tests. Because now, what I've studied, what I've fasted and prayed about has become just my natural way of instinct of doing stuff. And you don't have to just search out a scripture to be able to deal with a situation because you, 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 you live this life. It's a way of life. Walking in the spirit is a way of life. Okay. Being led by the spirit is a way of life. Doing things the way Jesus would have you to do it. And so now it's our responsibility to grow. And your response is up to you. Because you're going to be tested. God is going to test you to see. Can he use you for greater? For greater. For many a call of you thereby be chosen. Greater. Greater. God want to use you for greater. Amen? Amen. Give God some glory. Sons. Hallelujah. Thank you. I love you, sir. I love you. I love you. Amen. Thank God for you. He's an awesome God. I pray God's blessings upon you. You and your family. You all that are watching and listening. Amen. God is a healer. He's a deliverer. Amen. Lord bless these your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love you, saints.